There's something new from Diamond Select, and it's slightly sinister. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select. This is the uncanny X-Men gallery statue of Mr. Sinister. Nathaniel Essex was a biologist in Victorian England when he was exposed to the evolutionary theories of Charles Darwin. Believing that humanity was going through an evolutionary mutation, he began to perform unorthodox experiments to unlock the human genome. Eventually, he discovered the existence of N. Sabar Noor, the first mutant known as Apocalypse, and pledged himself to his service. Apocalypse genetically modified him, making him ageless with the powers of telepathy and telekinesis, and Essex chose a new name for himself, Sinister. He has since gained the power to shapeshift and regenerate from any injury. This PVC diorama of Mr. Sinister is based on his appearance in Marvel Comics, is made of high quality plastic, and features detailed sculpting and paint applications. before we get to this review, and an extensive review will follow. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out how tall Miss, Mr. Sinister stands. That's a lot of S's. I know what you're thinking, though. Why are you going way past his head? His head is further down. Ah, the reasoning for that is because I actually want to figure out how tall he is from the top of his cape. After all, that is the highest point to the statue. So really, from the bottom to the very top of his cape. The statue of Mr. Sinister stands 11.6, a little over 11 and a half inches in height. And that in centimeters works out to be 29.5, so almost 30 centimeters in height. That's rather impressive. As impressive as it may be in height, it pales in comparison to actually how good this statue looks. Let's get a look at it right now. Now the bottom of the base is kind of a green concoction of clouds that are kind of unwrapping and enveloping their way around Mr. Sinister's legs. I think this can be chalked up to why the statue feels so heavy. While certainly all of this is done of PVC plastic and it's one of the heaviest statues I've had for this size, I wonder if some of that can be chalked up to the base because the base does feel like it's got some substantial weight to it. The base itself they've been they've done actually in just translucent plastic. It's hollow on the inside there. Stable enough, of course, to hold the statue in place and it's not going to be going anywhere. But I really like that it's been done in a see-through green plastic. This kind of cloudy ectoplasmic cloud really is a nice showcase piece, at least from the bottom standpoint, for how good the statue is going to be on top of that. And I think one thing that's good about the base being so green is the fact that it doesn't compete with the colorings of the statue. Because the statue is really in like dark crimson reds and this kind of purpley metallic blue. I think it's really a good idea that they kept the base in a completely different color. The sculpting is really good, but keeping it also in this lime green is certainly a nice touch for when you look at the rest of the statue, which is really so much more darker in color scheme. Now, Mr. Sinister happens to be one of my all-time favorite X-Men villains. I would even take him over the likes of Magneto and Apocalypse, if you could actually believe that. There's something about this guy's look that I've always gravitated towards. For that reasoning, over the years of selling off my comic collection, I, and I can tell you, regretting it later, the three issues his first appearances in the Uncanny X-Men comics are still ones I have in my collection. Three yells somebody from the mob. How could he have three first appearances? Well, he actually appeared in X-Men 212, 213, and 221. 
In 212, he's actually only referenced as the employer behind the assassins known as the Marauders. Then we sort of kind of get a silhouette of him in Uncanny X-Men number 213 until finally getting a full appearance of him in Uncanny X-Men 221. Those three issues of all the comics I've sold over the years are still ones I have in my collection and not planning on selling them anytime soon. His few appearances in the X-Men cartoon of the 90s are also some of my favorite standout episodes, primarily because it had a lot to do with Cyclops. And I kind of like the way that they kind of played back and forth between the relationship of Mr. Sinister and, the Cy and Cyclops and the background that they have together. There's something about this guy's look, though it's changed over the years. They've modernized him, unfortunately. I've always kind of been a bigger fan of this garishly crazy looking costume which kind of always looked to me like a futuristic vampire i think a lot of that can be chalked up to the fact that he does have the pointed tipped collar and he also has the chalk like skin which is again kind of makes me feel like i'm looking at a very vampire like character uh, mr sinister always kind of looked to me like colossus a pale version of Colossus. Some of that also can be contributed to the fact that if you look at his costume, it sort of does look like Colossus's arms and his skin, where he's got those lines running across it. Although instead of silver, they go with a purple blue, which almost even has like an iridescent color when you slightly tilt it back and forth. It really does a great job, a wondrous job of reflecting the light off of the surface. And again, you can see like really how cool that coloring is. I love this metallic blue that they ended up choosing for a uh, good old Mr. Sinister here. In his hands, uh, he is casting, uh, I guess part of his mutant ability, the translucent blue plastic is a nice touch, flaming out from his open palms. And a nice contrast actually when you think of it to like the green that they've got down below. Mr. Sinister's calling card, I think, for any for any fan of the character, is probably this drape-like cape that he's known for having. It's not even so much like a cape, as it's made up of a series of strands that all kind of drape together, giving him this such iconic look. I prefer this look myself over the suited Mr. Sinister that he ended up looking like later on into the years. I've always been a bigger fan of this cape, and I think really like the gallery statue conveys like the f almost the life even really when you look at it that the cape has and possesses all on its own it's so again a really neat looking statue uh, the one thing that i really like about gallery statues is it keeps the price point generally low anybody looking to kind of get into the world of statue collecting but they know that some of the collecting of statues can get quite expensive gallery statues on average really range it from about a 30 to 40 dollar price point price point all the way up to about a 70 dollar price point so you can easily pick up someone like sinister for yourself and you're not going to break your wallet or your budget doing so again i really like the look of this character he's got the thigh high boots which again kind of makes him feel dated and with that also kind of gives him the appeal that i like so much probably the same reasoning why i like characters like mysterio crazy over the top and dated by their design but there's something really fun and charming about those particular characters spending some time looking at these kind of smaller boots which is always i found was a strange a character trait to this costume was the fact that he would have these small boots and then they would be part of these thigh high boots that he would have as well so it kind of almost had like a a boot within a boot you can see some natural wrinkles forming around the legs again using that splendid exquisite metallic purpley blue it works quite quite well uh, the crimson on the interior of his cape if you look really close to it ha seems to have even a texturing done to it it's not quite it's not quite like a cross stitching but you can definitely see it almost looks like it's got the texturing of something like possibly like a basketball or a football uh, you can see how the strands kind of separate from one another though really if you like look at the majority of the cape they've grouped it together and you don't see too many of the separations of the strands I can kind of get for the molding standpoint of it that they wouldn't want to jeopardize the mold by putting so many of the individual strands as being something on their own uh, grouping them together definitely makes a lot more sense I can definitely understand why Diamond Select went this route even like the cape has a metallic sheen to it. Although when you look at it, it seems to be a different color altogether than the coloring that they ended up going with for the rest of his front outfit here. 
Love the flames, again, coming out from his open hands. It's made of a translucent plastic. There's, again, a really a lot of stuff to like about this particular statue. The thing about it, though, I mean, if you look at it, the statue itself, generally on average, most gallery statues usually have their heroes or their villains. Of course, we have to include the villains into the mix. They're usually put in more dramatic poses. Mr. Sinister doesn't need to do that. He's just standing stoically, and he's casting his his mutant spells, if you will, with his hands on either side. I think really where the personality comes for the figure is the fact that he is in such a strong stance. And really, like, the cape is really is what ex is exhibiting most, if not all, the life and personality to the statue. Couple that with the fact that they did use that lime-colored display base. And it, personally speaking, I may seem biased for saying this, I think we've got ourselves an all-star winner here with the gallery statue release of Mr. Sinister. Yes, yes, I know I probably sound a little biased over this review. After all, taking a gallery statue for one of your favorite all-time X-Men baddies, how could you possibly find fault with it? Just because I actually like a character, sorry, just because I love an X-Men villain so much like Sinister, doesn't mean, though, that the statue can't come up a little short. Full disclosure, when I first had a look at the gallery statue of Mr. Sinister online, I didn't really like the idea that he had a big demonic grin. For me, when I think Mr. Sinister, I think of more of a neutral expression, not smiling in any way. Now that I got it, though, in hand, I kind of think that the smile has grown on me. It's demonic, and it makes me think that he's plotting something. And I think that works well for a character like Mr. Sinister. So even though I didn't like it before, I like the fact that, that they did incorporate a big demonic smile on his face, and I think it works well for a character like Mr. Sinister. Gallery statues are known in the past for being dynamically posed characters in a really cool backdrop or diorama stand. Mr. Sinister doesn't have a whole lot of that. In fact, when you look at it and you chalk it all up to his stance and his stance alone, all he's really doing is standing there. And I think that works well for a character like Mr. Sinister. You may not do that for a character like Spider-Man, but I think where Sinister makes up for it is the fact that he's such a menacing looking character and that cape has a life on its own. So it kind of feels like that's bringing in a little bit more of the dynamic aspect of it, even though the character is really just standing in place. Also in enjoying the additional kind of clouded smoke that they've got for his base. I look at it and I'm kind of thinking I'm seeing more a base that's suited for Mysterio, which so happens to also be one of my all-time favorite uh, villains in the Marvel Universe. But I think it works also well here for Sinister, kind of adding into his sort of creepy, spiritual spookiness that Mr. Sinister is. All around, there's a lot of things I like about the statue. The only shortcoming for a, probably what seemed to be a biased review was the fact that I didn't, didn't like the big demonic smile, but it since has grown on me. Let me know what you guys think down below of the new release of the gallery statue, the uncanny X-Men, Mr. Sinister. Are you a big fan of Mr. Sinister like I am? If you are, you may want to add this one to your collection. Good news, though, is it should be available right now at your local comic book stores if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. I want to send a big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select, by the way, for making this review possible and sending Mr. Sinister over my way so I could showcase it to you guys. If you guys are new to this channel, or let's just say, oh, I don't know, just say that you're a longtime viewer and never got around to it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, swing next door to hit that bell notification, and stay tuned because we're going to have a look at a whole bunch of Diamond Select Gallery statues in some upcoming reviews. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.